Coming to you live from Alola's Battle Royale Dome, it's the one, the only, Puckle Battlecast. <laughs> Welcome to the 11th episode of the Puckle Battlecast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my excellent sleepy co-hosts. Dr. Shamu. R. Sigma. And they are both sleepy boys. Let me tell you about it, guys. But as always, we are here to bring you Puckle Battlecast, the show where we talk about competitive Pokemon all day, every day, for probably the next 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how long we want to talk. So... We're going to jump right on into it, though. We have a new s- format for the show today. Our format is going to be, uh, we're going to start with opening with some recent news that's happened in the competitive community. Then we're going to go from there, and we are going to start discussing the meta this week, which is going to be the underused tier. We would like to discuss that. And then from there, we're going to break it down into a new team breakdown for you guys. Let's jump right into that news, then. There was a lot of stuff happening in the past. <clears throat> in the past, I guess it's been like three, four months since Battlecast happened. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So we're only going to focus on the things that just recently happened. <laughs> and I think the first thing and the biggest thing that a lot of people will probably want us to talk about is the international championships that just recently happened in Columbus, Ohio. So the North American International Championships happened for the VGC format, and we walked away with winners. Who won that? Jeremy, and he's an Ohioan. Yeah, that's true. So <laughs> that's why I remembered him. <laughs> yes, there's. Uh, I believe it was Jeremy from Jeremy something from Ohio. He actually he won with I believe a team of Tapu Lele, Metagross, Driftblim because Driftblim cheese cannot go away. And then you also have Rotom Heat. It's good to see that that for that core just isn't going away. <laughs> like oh. that core. That core is not going away. <laughs> Justin Burns uh, got second with uh, Metagross, Tapu Fini, Zapdos, Lando, Amoongus, and Incineroar. That's literally the team that I ran <laughs> at regionals uh, back in St. Louis. Before Incineroar, I was running double mega, though, with T-Tar. Mostly because Charizard Y was very popular, and it still is. Still fairly popular. Not as much with Incineroar running around. It's yeah, that's thing. true. It's, on, it's a thing on a lot of teams that just resists it and mm-hmm. Charizard cannot touch Incineroar in yes. most situations. Yeah, most situations. I agree with that. I mean I would I can understand running Incineroar and swapping into that T Tar slot because it kind of does the same job that T Tar did. Mm-hmm. Because T Tar just kind of put a stop to the weather and it was a nice little we- mini weather wars going on. But Incineroar <laughs> accomplishes the same thing and gets a boost from being in the sun. So you know what? Incineroar, you're you're all for it. I'm down. Fire t- having a f- having that extra fire typing as well compared to something like Tyranitar helps in the in the Metagross mirror match mm. as well because you can actually hit the Metagross for super effective damage. That was one thing that I found really difficult just playing in the Metagross mirror match. Also, you get fake out, originals. which is awesome. Yeah, you do get fake out as well. Fake out support. You're getting um, not just fa- you're getting intimidate. You're getting dark type moves, fire type moves. And Incineroar has some decent support moves as well, so it's it's a good mon. I mean, I understand why it's in it's in like such high usage in the VGC meta right now. Yeah, it's got everything you want in a VGC Pokemon. Uh, we could also talk about uh, Paul Chua running Chalk, but I don't want to. <laughs> I really don't want to. I can't believe it, man. He I, like he must have done that for the lulls. I swear. Uh, it got uh, really popular at the end of May, and I, he was able to. True. I think he was able to win or come in second at a regional with the team too. So interesting, yeah. I mean, I can believe Chalk does well. It just was always good. Mega Kangaskhan, even with that debuff, is still a monster. The debuff really hurts when you watch the damage go down, though, for the second. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, and the lack of power up punch. Yeah, the lack of power up punch really hurts Kangaskhan. Let me tell you, it just does not feel very good. But, I mean, that's that's pretty much all there is to talk about from that regional in terms of teams. 
I mean, you see a lot of Metagross. You're seeing a one random chalk team. Um, you do also see a couple of Charizards floating around. But outside of that, it's, it's pretty standard stuff that's making top cut. I'm not... I, I'm happy to see that the meta is at least settled compared to the 2015 meta. Not the 2015 meta, the 2016 meta. No, the 2017 meta. That's the one I'm thinking yeah. of. The one that just never had a centra- central focus. It's like the fluid 15 Pokemon of a team. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, here's 20 Pokemon that are all equally good, and you just have to guess which ones people are going to bring this week. And th- if you guessed right, you're going to do well. There's probably an Arcanine in there somewhere. Yeah, was, it probably <laughs> is. I don't even know is, if an Arcanine made top cut. It does not oh. look like an Arcanine made top cut. No, not this uh, format. Oh, not format. this format. Yeah, in last format, there's probably an Arcanine. <laughs> All right, though. I, so the one thing I did want to talk about, and I think this is hilarious, is somebody actually got kicked out of Top Cut. And you have more information about this, Sigma, and I want you to just delve into it because you can tell the story far better than I can. Yeah. Okay. So at the end of the Swiss rounds, which would be day two, there were two people playing, and I believe one of them is the one that won. And at that point, he had secured his top eight spot, and his opponent had not. They would require winning in order to get to the top eight so they talked beforehand and the person who was guaranteed the spot was afraid of paul chua's chalk team (laughs) 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 because chalk (laughs) so they were talking about maybe him scooping and uh words were said i believe that the person who needed the win to get to top eight asked to scoop and in the rules documents that is not allowed Somebody else overheard this Uh. and brought it to the judge's attention, but action wasn't taken until the person who got the scoop to already Mm -hmm. won their top eight match. Not even top eight match. I think they they won won the semifinals. He won the semifinals, right? No, he got to the semifinals. Oh, he got to to the semifinals. He was disqualified. That's great. (laughs) That's nuts. Like you like that's too late. You can't you can't act on that. There's so many things that were wrong about this situation. So many. Yes. <laughs> like, like the person that he won against in the top eight probably should have let been allowed to go forward. Yeah. So that's well there's what the should have th- happened. There's a lot of things that should have happened. Uh one, if you were gonna disqualify him, you should have disqualified him then and there, or at least before top cut matches began. Like you could disqualify him bad. after Swiss. That's fine. Um, that would have been the proper way to do it. If you're not going to do that, don't disqualify them. Second, I it's just like this thing in the VGC community where they all care about playing the tournament system more than anything else. Mm-hmm. And it hurts my soul. And I find it somewhat disgusting that like they care that much about the numbers. And it's not just about, I'm going to see how well I can do in this tournament so I can get all the points that I need, right? Mm-hmm. And that's something I think needs to be the focus more than, hey, I can get so-and-so into the top cut to make sure that they get more championship points if this happens. <laughs> and I, I don't like that mentality. And I, personally, I just do not. It doesn't sit well with me. And yeah. moving from there even, then there's the, there's, the, there's the tattletale. Like, that's even worse. I guess the tattletale yeah. also needed top eight in order to get his world sent right, too. Oh. <laughs> and... He thought that he would also be top eight had the other person lost. That's who was disqualified. So uh, was he? <laughs> what, was he not? I hope not. Hmm. I hope did, he didn't get top eight though, right? I don't think no. so. Good. That's good. Yeah. That's we had a that's person in top four instead. <laughs> Go ahead, Chamber. You were saying something. It's just dirty. It's like real. You're gonna be an asshole about that. Like it's not like anything actually happened at that point, and just because right. someone wanted to like. Like, even if you can't scoop, even if someone wants you, it's like, doesn't mean just you just do that. It's kind of like, it's, I don't know. It doesn't well, sit well is, with you, right? Yeah. No. I, I mean, I mean, that's, I wouldn't expect something like that to happen in a puckle tournament, right? Where mm-hmm. we had, say we had like 50 people in a puckle tournament, like the UTC and it's Swiss now. And somebody's like, well, you can make top cut if I lose. Cause I've already guaranteed my spot. Right. <laughs> and I don't think anybody would ever make that deal in the Puckle tournaments. I just think it really... If you look into the Pokemon Company's series of rules, there's something that's called Spirit of the Game. And I just don't see that mentality of trying to play the tournament system as the spirit of the game. Well, one of the things is, 
they allow you to scoop to your opponent in the rules document. Yeah. But you have to be scooping to them at the beginning of the game, and you have to call a judge over, apparently, so that they can mm. witness you saying, I'm scooping. Mm. Um, I don't you know. can't be asked to scoop. <laughs> also, you can't wait to see the results and then scoop, which That's is another true. weird rule. <laughs> I mean, I understand that, too, though, because it might be like, well, I'll scoop because I'm going to lose anyway, right? Well, yeah, that's allowed, but you can't like, oh, I'm going to win. Well, I'm scooping. Yeah. Because I saw that other person over there win and I don't care anymore. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, it hurts. I don't know. Like Shamu said, I don't think it sits well with me. No, it's, it's not one of the healthier aspects to the. No, it's, it's very like the whole thing is just very muddy and I dislike it, but we'll, we'll let, let everybody else come to their own opinions. I would like to move on from there, though, and we're going to shift gears to Smogon now from VGC. And in Smogon news, a lot of crazy nonsense happened over there as well. So for those of you who aren't super into Smogon and don't understand the tiers, you have, of course, your OU, your UU, your uh, RU, your NU, your... I'm, I'm doing this in order, right? And then PU. In each of these, every three months, they always look at the usage stats and they move things around. If things are being used in a higher tier more often, they'll bump them up to a higher tier. And if things aren't being used in a higher tier, they'll bump them down a tier. So if we look at the usage stats and this quarter, we finally got the usage stats for that. They had a lot of issues because they also created the borderline tiers, I believe, in the past month or two. I'm not exactly sure when they created them. They always exist. They always existed. I feel like they were used more recently. Yeah, they're just the ban list is what yeah, they are. They're just ban list, and I, I think apparently that messed up a lot of the usage statistics for the tiers. I, I honestly don't like using them as uh, ban list just because if it's if it's not usable in UU, it should just go to OU, right? I'm mm-hmm. sorry, it's not balanced for a meta. It's going to OU because that's the only use tier it's used for anyway, right? I, I mean, it might mess up their usage statistics ideas for moving things around, but I feel like you could figure it out. But people who are willing to spend far more time on tiering are doing this, and it's, that's not me. I'm not going to spend that much time on tiering. So they hit a snafu, though, where all of the... What, what was it? Was their calculations were messed up? Uh, they uh, counted the same month twice, and mm, the month they missed was the one with like the highest weighting to it. Uh, the June stats were supposed to count for like 20, 20 fourths of the weighing, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they didn't count that at all in the actual count so perfect yeah things have been moving around though there's a lot of interesting stuff i want to talk about a lot of it in the topic today just because a lot of it does pertain to you you and it it does change things and i'd like to speculate that on that a little bit however i think that's really silly that they messed up the way they tier things i do think the biggest change and this is one that we're not going to talk about is mega charizard y was in pu um, first of all, when did it move to PU and why did that happen? Exactly, Second of all, yeah. it's all in OU because I can't believe it was in PU. There are so many things there. Like you could do so well with it in a lower meta. Like super well with it because Charizard Y is one of those really good Pokemon, especially in something like RU or NU where you have a bunch of chlorophyll users. I feel like Charizard Y would just be incredibly useful. Plus, this was base stats, like, what, 159 special attack? That hit hard. Yeah, in, in the sun. Like, in the yeah, sun. Like, not many things have stats like that, and if they do, they are very, very generic. And don't, like, if Jarlard Y has a decent move pool, like, yeah, and with coverage, like, that thing would be a monster. I don't know how it got put into PU. If, unless that was, like, a typo there, I don't know. Uh, it wasn't a typo. Is, a lot of formats have weather clauses as you get down that's yeah. true uh, i believe you you only recently banned drought in the recent months because really? they were tired of banning like houndoom <laughs> 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 it's like we keep banning these weather abusers and not the weather itself so <laughs> maybe that's we should fair. just get rid of drought and then like are you i believe has a specific clause that says we respect all of the clauses that held in the formats above us Except the drop clause, we're mm. we're okay with that still. The the lower tiers are starting to get a little specific, and it's cool. I mean, it helps make the metas more fun, more diverse. Mm-hmm. And I, I do I do suggest if you are, I, I guess if you're in a place like me and probably even Shamu, where we sometimes get bored with the OU meta, 
which is very easy to do, in my opinion. It's very easy to yeah. become very bored with the with the Pokemon meta. And you go and play a lower tier because you're going to be able to have a new team building experience, which is a lot of fun. I love team building in lower tiers just because it's a new experience. And you can also just get a little bit more play. I also think it's incredibly useful if you want to go back to OU because you can take these Pokemon from lower tiers and be like, this was really useful in a lower tier and you can use it in OU. Just because a Pokemon is not in OU doesn't mean you can't use it there. And I know a lot of newer players get stuck in that rut. And I would really like to encourage people, if they can, if you can find a spot for something like Quagsire in OU, run Quagsire in OU. It's fine. It works with Meltank. Quagsire is solid. Yeah, he's always solid. He's in PU right now. Even though Snorlax was like 100 plus HP stat, like, but you've got what, 90s, 80s, high 80s, like all around. It's pretty solid still. Yeah, he's a good mon. I'm well, really happy with him. But, yeah, like just bulk wise, like you run Scald Earthquake, like you're still doing ha- pretty good. Like you're hitting special and physical. You have the burn, you've got recover, you've got haze or toxic or whatever you want on there. Like, and he's got unaware. Mon. Yeah. So if you need like a fa- like a hazer or just something that's to take a hit, I think in OU he kind off. of gets out he gets outclassed by Clefable as an unaware user, but then on top of that, Toxapex also shows up as a hazer in terms yeah. of being bulky and stuff, and I think Toxapex works in that in that regard a little bit yeah. better than um, than Quagsire. But Quagsire, I think it's a solid UU bond, and it makes me really yeah. sad. To see him go. It just got the niche of a water ground with unaware and haze compared to yeah, Toxic. Absolutely. Like, just has high def- high stats, low HP, mm-hmm. and just haze. You have regenerator and recover sh- still, but it's just the fact that something sets su- up. Like Charizard X sets up like three Dragon Dance. And you're not going to live in Earthquake. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so on these notes, I do want to just cut us off here because if we go any farther, we're going to start talking about UU. So we're going to take a short break here, fam. And we are going to come right back at you with our discussion of the underused meta. Repel Incorporated is looking for adventurous, brave, and talented individuals to join our team here at our Viridian City location. We here at Repel Incorporated produce the number one product in Pokemon Repellent today. In order to create our high quality product, we need trainers like you to venture forth into the depths of Viridian Forest and procure vital elements of the Repel formula, including Vespiquen saliva, Beedrill Stingers, and Venomoth Powder. Required skills of the position include at least three badges and a Pokemon team, preferably at least one fire type. Psychic trainers need not apply. Applicants must also be willing to sign a waiver, stating they do not hold the company responsible for any injury or fatalities, for that matter, received in the line of duty. So come on and join our exciting team. And on to the meta discussion. Our meta, as I said at the beginning of the show this month, is going to be the underused here, or o- or UU. I almost called it OU because nobody plays UU. I remember, I don't know if you guys remember this. This is, a, this is a quick aside. I'm already breaking the rules that I said before that we started the show. But uh, quick aside, do you guys remember the, the UU no scald tier that existed for like three months? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I do. <laughs> okay, so the quick aside. That's, the, now we're done. Because that tier doesn't exist anymore, and we just have Gen 7 UU, and we've been playing it this past month and a half almost now, and we are having a, I, I had a good time with it. I've been trying to build like a few teams around a few different Pokemon, and I've come to appreciate and learn a lot of things about these Pokemon, so let's first just crack into the usage stats. And we'll just we'll go from there, and then people can draw their own conclusions, and we can talk about some of the shifts and things that got kicked out of the meta. Because a lot of the Yusha stats speak volumes. <laughs> so, number one on the Yusha stats for this past quarter was Scizor at 40.5%. It's literally the Landorus Therian of UU, but with Bullet Punch. And, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's solid mod because there aren't too many Steel types in it, and it's pretty splashable. You can kind of just throw a Scissor on anything. Um, it is a counter to a lot of big stuff in the meta. It handles a lot of things really well, so I think that does need its own just, look, this exists. It's really good. And so yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely, obviously, one of the largest threats in the meta because it's at 40% usage. So take that for what you will. The next one is Gliscor, which is no longer in UU, 
it got yeah. moved up to OU with the recent tier shifts, which I'm so happy about because it was, I mean, it was literally the Landorus Therian of underused, quite literally, with Toxic Heal. It was even worse. And that it honestly brings a really weird balance with Scizor and Gliscor in that meta, and you guys can feel free to disagree with me, but it's this really odd balance because a lot of things run in OU for people just try to relating to a more popular meta is that a lot of things will run Hidden Power Ice literally because Lando, including Lando itself. Uh, let's not talk about that problem. But Hidden Power Ice, it's good because it's times four hit on a, what can be a bulky Pokemon. Same with Gliscor. Gliscor is incredibly bulky. You wouldn't hit it with a Hidden Power Ice. But the problem is you also have the popular Scizor. And so what do you try to do to knock out Scizor? You run Hidden Power Fire. And there's this weird balance of, do I run Hidden Power Ice or do I run Hidden Power Fire? Which I find really interesting in this meta compared to the OU meta, where it's just like, no, Hidden Power Ice, literally every time. Yeah. Unless you're running Ice Beam and you need a Hidden Power, and you're just like, yeah, Hidden Power Fire, sure. But it's a really weird balance. And I it's interesting, it makes team building a little bit more complicated, which is fine. You, but now it's going to be easier now that Gliscor's gone. You can just be like, yeah, Hidden Power Fire, 1,000%. Hidden power steel. <laughs> Hidden power steel. <laughs> we will see if that becomes a thing. But. That'll never become a thing. Getting there. <laughs> Mega, Mega Deontay did get dropped down to UU recently, but the problem is Scissor's the most popular Pokemon anyway. Scissor so, will be more often. It's just going to bump up now. Even yeah, more. I think you're going to see the usage of Scissor bump up a lot. And I, I wonder... So... So if Scissor's usage like bumps up to like fifty percent, I want to know if they're gonna ban Scissor for over centralizing the meta. Obviously, over centralizing the meta because it's on over half of all teams. And if they do that, I think that sets a dangerous precedent for the OU people. But it's not gonna matter because this isn't politics. Um, <laughs> it's not like the Supreme Court's making a ruling or anything. But. It would be really interesting to see if that happens, and then you could be like, "But you, you did it, you, you did it." Uh, so, but we're, we're just gonna we're just gonna move on. Another top Pokemon in that tier is Latias, and I agree with that so hard, especially since Soldu got its nerf to like a normal item. Uh, yeah, I Latias has been such a good Pokemon for so long. It's so weird to see it in UU, but it, yeah. it has its place. <laughs> I really like it there, though. It does really well, especially with Soldu. For those of you who aren't aware, Soldu got a nerf. It used to bump their special attack and special defense by 50%. Is that what it used to do? Yeah, it was, yeah, pretty, it was a pretty calm mind. Yeah, it was absolutely <laughs> disgusting. And so it's got a nerf now where it just bumps up the dragon type and psychic type attacks by, I think, 20%, uh, mm -hmm. which is fine because that's more than some items like Life Orb. And typically, if you're running a Latias, you're going to be trying to run Dra Draco and Psy Shock slash Psychic literally every set. So Soldu works really well there, in my opinion. That's at 23% right now. At 22% is the banned Breloom. Uh, Breloom got banned because Spore... And Breloom's actually not that bad of a Pokemon. He's he's not that bad. He's not great, but that's why he was in a new U, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first Mega comes up on the list at number five with Mega Manetric. I think that's a solid Pokemon as well. I mean, these, obviously they're all solid. It resists Scissor. And it has like, Overheat. Well, and it yeah. outruns a lot of things in the meta, I think. What's its base speed? It's like 130? 135? That sounds yeah, 135. right. 135. I know that at yeah. level 100, it's like 405 speed. That's what it's I can 135 tell you. 135 with like um like 115 special attack, I think. It's the same as low punny, I think. Mega low punny. I believe that's true. Uh, but yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, and on top of that, it gets Volt Switch. I I love yeah. I love Volt Turn in UU. I think it works really well. And you have a lot of Mons that like that's their thing. They can Volt Turn really well. High Dragons at number six, which is fine because High Dragon's always been good. And in a tier where there are very few good fairy types, I think it's it definitely can shine. Um, and especially with Breloom being gone, there isn't like a good mock punch user that can just be like, bam, High Dragon, you're down. Because High Dragons usually run with a scarf. Um, you have mm -hmm. Alolan Muck down there too. I'm so happy though, because Alolan Muck is good. I've been trying to build with it, but I've been... Uh, I've been trying to work on a Beedrill team, and I don't see the synergy between Muck and Beedrill that well. I would like to uh, run an Alolan uh, Muck team, though. I think it's a lot of fun. 
just because you get you get so many good moves with Alolan Monk. You get knock off. You're getting um, poison, whatever you want, poison, yeah. and it gets all of these other good moves. Um, so Alolan yeah, it gets Monk, your I coverage so. punches. It gets also, I believe, it gets uh, pursuit, which is really good for pursuit trapping, like a psychic type. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a good mon. I'm really happy about it, and I really want to try to get more usage out of it in my personal play. Um, so I don't want to keep going too much because this will just be me reading off usage stats. Uh, so I want to just jump into it and we can talk about our experiences because the three of us have played UU this month. And I want to mm-hmm. talk about, I'll, I'll get started. Just you guys can feel free to jump in and be like, hey, I think this is also a really big threat. But personally, in terms of threats and things you need to consider when you're team building and something that I I personally think should everybody should think about when they're team building is Mega Beedrill. I can not enough talk about how I think Mega Beedrill is an underappreciated star of that meta because it is incredibly fast. I think it's like 438 speed at level 100, so whatever that is, like I think that's 145 or 145 150 speed and it so and it gets a huge great coverage. It's like great coverage. You're getting a bug type move and U-turn slash X scissor. You should run U-turn by the way. Do not run X scissor. Um it's 145 yeah. With 150 attack. Okay, that's what I thought. And you're getting drill run because yeah. why couldn't we make it more OP? Um, you don't need protect now because yeah, you don't need protect boost. exactly. Um, so he gets to run four moves. Knock off is a good option, and then he also gets poison jab. So you're not stopping him with anything else. Like he's a he's a menace. So the big things in the tier that help you out with that are things that are above him in usage. And you have Crobat, which I think is a really good op- option to fight him because Crobat can hit him with a super effective Brave Bird, and he can take pretty much every hit from uh, says, yeah. or Beedrill. I think he, it's more than it's always a three hit KO if you build a bulky Crobat. And Mega Agron does really well against him. You can also use, uh, I believe, Mega Aerodactyl's a base one fifty speed, so that outruns him. Yeah, it's faster. And then you also have options in uh, Scizor. Scizor obviously can do it. And finally, you also have uh, Hip Out on. And there's one more I wanted to talk about. Oh, Choice Garf Infernape. Choice Garf Infernape. I think you see a lot of those mostly, I think, because of Beedrill. Also, putting a Choice Garf on Infernape isn't the worst thing you can do in the entire world. No, it it can always (laughs) U-turn. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, so I just want to I just want to hear from you guys. Did you guys notice anything else that you thought was a big threat or something you had an issue with or anything of that sort? Uh, even with it out at Zemu, Kamoa was kind of scary. Mm. Just not knowing what it's going to be doing. It's probably going to be Dragon Dancing, but whether it's going to be running Poison Jab, Fire Punch. It's got the coverage to be a lot of different things. Which That's true. Yeah. An issue. It has That's close true. combat now. Mm-hmm. It's like the... Uh, what is it? I'm trying to think of what it was before. Um, I guess it combined with like Greninja before in like Gen Six, where it's just like, oh, what move they're gonna they're gonna have now? Like, mm, I don't think it's ever gonna be as bad as Greninja. No, but... no, it's not gonna be as as bad, but it's almost kind of in that sort of area. Like, it can it it can get just about everything. It's just what moves are you gonna see this time? Yeah, he, he has several different viable sets. Several different ones. I think that's interesting. I think Komo is definitely something to think about just because he gets a lot of issues. There could be a lot of things going on with Komo. A lot of mm-hmm. things. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what about you, Shambu? Is there anything other than Komo and Beedrill that you were you found particularly useful slash scary in the UU meta? Um, Nothing else really scary because like Mega Beedrill is just like a you see that and you just kind of like go, um, okay, how am I dealing with this? If yeah, you don't right. Like um, but I was trying to think of any stuff else. Like, I know we were messing around with uh, Crook quite a bit. You could do Crook a lot with Crook. Just, Crook is just solid overall. I think Crook's just a solid mon in general. I think it gives a little outclassed in OU only because of the excess of fairy types Yeah, that exist. I'm hoping Gen 8 kind of brings us a balance. With the fairy types, because we, I feel like we just over, like, we brought fairy types in and they were a nice meta flattener in Gen 6, but then we kind of just went overboard with the fairy types in Gen 7. 
we overcompensated. So I'm kind of hoping we balance it out just a little bit more in the upcoming games. Nagan and Adele could have done it, and then yeah. Nagan and Adele was broken. Yeah, and then it, <laughs> they tried, and it was too good. And so the next thing, I, one other Pokemon I want to bring up that I think is really interesting in that tier is uh, Cobalion. I want Cobalion to work so bad. And it's up so high in the usage. It's like uh, 24th. And I don't understand why, because I can never get it to work. Maybe it's my play style. It literally just sets up rocks, and they get just a defensive well, wall. you're supposed to be able to... What is it? You're supposed to be able to swords dance with it, and then you just like go to town. Like That's what <laughs> people have been using it for, apparently. Like I can't, I can't do it. I haven't personally done it. But I could just be a bad player. Of, I could just be a bad Cobalion player. It's a very just, realistic thing that can happen because that yeah, is just. I don't know Pokemon. why. Me personally, I just think I see Cobalion. I just think it's like a you just a stealth rock utility mon. That's all I see it as because he gets full switch. He does yeah, get that's full how switch. I've always looked at it. Yeah, as a, I never see it as a sword dancer. I just see it as this pivot utility. Mm-hmm. You got one twenty nine defense. Let me see if I can find it. I want to. I'm looking at the viability rankings right now. And I want to see if I can find Cobalion. Um, uh, Cobalion's A ranked. <laughs> what? Okay, so we're just talking about how we can't make this thing work. It's on the same tier apparently as like Infernape and Crocodile and Mega Manetric. It's also, because the fact that it is a Steel type too, I'm pretty sure that's one uh, of the reasons. That but that Fighting type kind of like neutralizes. It does, it does neutralize perk. it quite a bit, but it's still a Steel type. I and just don't understand. I want fighting it... coverage because you don't have any fighting they... type. I know you have that quite a few. Never mind. I don't think they have tier updates for uh, set viabilities. So I am, I am just like blown away by that. Actually, it's a, it's ranked higher than Mega B Drill. <laughs> I'm just so blown away right now. I can't believe that. Wow. Okay. Good on you. Good on you, Cobalion. Uh, <laughs> like. I gotta, I get, I've gotta go build a Cobalion team and make it work. I need to learn how to do this. I need to learn how to play Cobalion now. And you, you, this is happening. Shamu, you, you're not gonna set rocks with it. You're gonna use it to punch things. I think it's also there because it handles Caesar. It does handle well, Caesar. That's true. It completely walls Caesar, and it, it might just be that. that's why Sword Dance is the same. Could he come in on Caesar? Then he set up a Sword Dance, and then you become a threat. What? You know what? That's probably the way to do it. So because guess what it, we're doing today? We're we're building Cobalion, the team. It's happening. Everybody. I don't think you build it for it. You don't do that. You just build it like okay, if my team went to three door, okay, let me put Cobalion on. That could like, be a good. That could be a good reason to use it. Have something else that can just actually kill Caesar, but like. Yeah. Hey, no. I want to abuse. C- I want to abuse someone who has a Caesar. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Let me just do this. Well, because Cobalion can double dance, man. It's got. Uh... It's got Swords Dance and Rock Polish. So you can do some stuff. You could tear up some stuff. You can. With I don't know if you want to always run like Rock Polish, though. You got 108 speed, which is high. It's not high enough, mm-hmm. but it is high already. Well, I mean, it's you don't have any other speed boosting moves available to you. Like, you yeah. don't have a Dragon Dance, right? No, no, I get it. It's just, I'm just saying, like, that's an extra move gone when you could have coverage. Because you'd have dual stab. Coverage. Let's put that in quotes. Like, because get, I, I his dual it. stab is not bad coverage in general. Like, yeah. Yeah, with close combat and Iron Head, I feel like that's solid coverage. Like, you're not going to be able to take on, I don't know. Um, I, I honestly, I, I, I think that hits almost everything neutrally. I can't think of something that would be, that would not take a neutral hit from either close combat or, or right, close Iron Head. Close, like fighting's got really good coverage in general. Like fighting type is a really good coverage type, and being a physical attacker, I think, is also really good. The problem is there's just so many good fighting types to choose from in that tier. Like Infernape, I think, is a solid choice. Yeah, and Tentacruel is the one thing that resists both of those types, from what I'm looking. There you go. That's what. Yeah, Yeah. it should. It should. Tentacruel (laughs) is in the tier. Tentacruel is good too. I would be a fan of I. Ten, I think we were running one. We're going to talk about it a little bit later um, when we go into the team of the episode here. But um, we Tentacruel is actually a solid mon in that tier. Chandelure also resists both of them too. Ah, well, you just that's literally two threats to Cobalion. 
Like that's mm-hmm. all I see. And then not even really in Tentacruel. That's not really. Yeah, its defense isn't that good. Yeah, it, it's not really a threat to Cobalion because what's I what is Tentacruel going to do other than scald and hopefully burn Cobalion? Like it's not going to do much haze. else. Haze it, it could haze. It could haze. Uh, that is a good point that I completely forgot about. So touche to you. And I could also set up toxic. Could I, yeah, I could set up toxic spikes. I didn't so, realize Nih- was... Nihilego was in this tier. I think it's banned, but I don't know. Is it banned? It was at forty. It was at fortieth in usage, so it might have gotten banned pretty early. I didn't realize it was in this tier. That blows my mind. There's the other it's thing to note about UU um, is that there's like no fairy types. I think I mentioned that briefly. There's no uh, like, good fairy types outside of like Sylveon and I think Togekiss. Oh no, it is in UU. Well, huh. there's one other. Uh, Klefki. We have Altario. Oh yeah, Mega Altario. But we're gonna talk more about that during the the team. Togekiss. Uh, to- yeah, I said Togekiss. You guys oh, okay. aren't listening that's... to me. You guys don't listen yeah, to me. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it hurts my feelings. But I mean, that's. I mean, this is a solid setup here, though. I'm a big fan of this meta. I don't have much else to say about it right now. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have any closing thoughts on UU as a meta or anything else that we might have missed. Yeah, apparently Nihiligo is not banned. It just happens to die to Scissor. So, you know. That's true. <laughs> That's and so Gliscor. True. You're so right. So I guess we'll turn it off there. And we're going to take a, another break here, guys. And we'll be right back at you with our team of the episode. Hey, Puckalonians. It's Sublime Manic. Can't get enough of your favorite flip-flopping podcast? Then check out our social media. You can find links to our Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube, all from our website, PocoPodcast.com. And you can join our Discord to hang out with your favorite hosts and other Pocolonians. Also, check us out at twitch.tv slash thepucklepodcast. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, consider subscribing to our Twitch channel. You can also check us out at YouTube at YouTube slash PucklePodcast. And we also have a Patreon if you're able to give anything at patreon.com slash PucklePodcast. And welcome to the team of the episode... This week, we have, of course, for you, an underused team that the three of us have been playing with. It is a Mega Altaria team that we've been playing with. So I'm just going to quickly break down what everything is here right now. Uh, We have a Mega Altaria. It's a special set, so we'll get more into that. We also paired that with a Rotom Mo with Grassium Z, so it kind of hits like a truck. To back that up, we decided to go with Tentacruel with Black Sludge. Um, it's, It's just standard Tentacruel. It hazes it, rapid spins. And just to complete that Firewater Grass Core, we decided to go with Chandelure with a Choice Scarf, uh, just so you can hit things fast and really hard. Uh, of course, because we're playing OU, we of course have to run Scizor. It is, the Lando, it is the Lando T of UU. We can't, we can't not play with Scizor. And then we brought, of course, our favorite, the one and only, the Crook, the Crookedile with Rocky Helmet. So... This team was actually pretty solid. I was really happy with the way it played and the way it worked out. Of course, if you guys want to play with this team after we talk about it in the show, we will include the te- the showdown spread in the show notes down below. But this team was a lot of fun. I had a blast with it. We have Altaria with um, Hyper Voice, Fire Blast, Earthquake, Roost, and of course, it's just maxed out special attack and speed. And that has solid coverage, personally. Like that, you, you, We were talking about lack of fairy types. And this is probably the one fairy type in that entire meta <laughs> that I think can do something productive because hyper voice hits hard. You're running, I think base 100 speed when you're a mega, which isn't terrible. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's not terrible. And I mean, fire blast is good because scissor. Um, if you, if you can predict the scissor switch, it. it's good coverage though. And Rotom Mo is actually the one Pokemon on here that isn't in the UU tier. But I think it should be just because of how much I think it plays, how well it plays with a lot of things. Because it just pairs up really well with a lot of things, especially in terms of like a Volt Turn to- core, which we kind of have with Rotom Mo and Scissor here. You can U Turn with Scissor, you can Volt Switch with Rotom Mo, and you can kind of keep going. And they cover each other's resistances somewhat well. Minus Fire. Minus Fire. Yeah. Um, you have Tentacruel for that, though. You have Chandelier, too. Oh, yeah, and Chandler. No, well, no, Chandel- no. Uh, we're running Infiltrator on Chandler yeah. because it, Infiltrator is personally, I think, a little bit better in this meta just because you can get a lot of subs. Mm-hmm. 
in this meta and if you can just be like yeah i don't care and just shadow ball right through it mm -hmm. and it's gonna it's gonna feel really good it also helps you stop sub souls <laughs> when that happens i think i think most notably until recently you have glycore that could do that oh yeah yeah well. <laughs> i would just i would just think about that um though it, you're running trick and memento as well just to have some fun <laughs> um and then you of course have scissor pretty standard scissor it's swords dance bullet punch u-turn roost uh 124 defense 136 speed 248 hp very bulky defensive scissor but it still hits real hard after a swords dance so keep that in mind also i've always thought that regular scissor was better than mega scissor just personally i've never thought that i ever needed that like enhanced scissor to go and fight things for me. One, it gets the same ability when it mega evolves. And two, it like mega mega scissor doesn't really offer me much. It gives it like a defense boost, right? And that's all. I don't really need any of that. I've got regular scissor. It can handle everything on its own. Crook, of course, is just pretty standard lead crook. I, I think we're, we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. I think there are some benefits to maybe playing with the Chandelure and Crookadile swapping out chandelure for something else and making your crook your choice scarfer but here we're running rocky helmet uh we've got knockoff stealth rock earthquake taunt a pretty standard lead crook now i wouldn't suggest that every match you lead crook but if you want to find a lead and you don't know what to lead i think crook is a solid choice uh, but going into the team and how it played a little bit we were talking about this a little bit before the show and the big problem is honestly mega manetric and I, Sigma, jump into that because you had way more comments about that than I did. Uh, what I found was if you couldn't get your Altaria Mega Evolved ready, uh, you were in bad straits with the Mega Manetric because mm -hmm. it has something for everything on your team except maybe Chandler. But <laughs> like it'll, it has its overheat, which hits Scizor real bad, Rotom real bad, has HP Ice, which will probably, which would hit your Altaria really bad mm -hmm. and your. Uh, it probably to hit KOs the crook. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's the uh, one thing that I think it might be useful to run like choice scarf on crook, just because yeah. then you can outrun that and you can take it and you have a you have a straight up uh, counter. But I don't know. I think I think choice scarf chandelier is too much too good to lose in that scenario mm -hmm. because it does a lot of work for you. One, it scares scissor out real well. Um, it also hits a lot of things neutrally. Uh, having like stab shadow ball that's just going to be running around hitting things real hard is just very useful. Blissey is in this tier though; it should be noted. So you do need to watch out for that. But if you just have a physical attacker, you're going to be okay. Um, and we did a pretty good job, I think. Well, there's only two physical attackers on this team, but uh, unless you count Altaria's earthquake. So I, I mean, there were a few issues, but I really like the way this team played. I think it was a really good synergy. Because, first of all, you've got your water, fire, grass core. So for those of you new to team building, I would always suggest trying to start with either a fire, water, grass core or what's known as the fantasy core, which is dragon, fairy, steel. We technically have that, but I want people to, I want to make the comment, if you're going to be team building with the fantasy core, two of the Pokemon shouldn't share a type on that fantasy core, on any core that you're trying to build with. <laughs> like, we, yes, we have a dragon and a fairy type, but those are both the same Pokemon. And... That does not institute a core because the reason you want that core is because in the in the case of fire, water, grass, you can find one of the other two that will resist a move that's coming in for super effective damage on that Pokemon, right? Like Rotom's going to get hit by a fire type attack. Oh, I switched into Tentacruel or even Chandelure. But uh, you, even then, Rotom's going to get hit by an ice type move, switch into Tentacruel. Tentacruel's going to get hit by an electric type move, switch into Rotom. Uh, Chandelure's going to hit by a ground type move, switch into Rotom, right? It just works out really well. You have these this nice defensive balance. This is just a very general team building thing. But I do want people to realize you can't do that with uh, Pokemon that share the types in the core. Now, you can have two separate cores in a team uh, and have te Pokemon share types. Like, you could have a Fantasy core and a Fire, Water, Grass core and have something like Ferrothorn. Yeah, that or works. Sharon and Polyon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Th these These work. But I would definitely make sure that you're not like, yeah, this Pokemon's got two of those types, and I've got that core. Now, a lot of people had problems with that in Piddle, I realized. And I, I just want to make sure that this is clear. Though I think Dark type is also a really good type in this meta, only because there's no fairy types. 
the lack of fairy types makes this game so much fun because you can kind of just like run around with things. Um, and that's why Mega Altaria, I think, is very good because a lot of things are risking the fact that there is no dragon type or fairy type. Right? You have High Dragon in high usage, you have Infernape in high usage, you have a good number of Pokemon that are just weak to fairy up in these high usages, minus Scizor. Minus Scizor. But just remember, just take out that Scizor and you're like, your life is awesome. <laughs> so you have your Chandelure and you have your Intimidate Crook. So it's a, it's a lot of fun, though. I, I really like playing with this team. I, I didn't notice too many issues other than the Mega Manetric one. Um, you do have to watch out when you're playing against Beedrill, but I think that's something you have to do regardless all of the time. <laughs> uh, one thing to note is I don't think Choice Scarf Chandelure actually outspeeds Mega Beedrill. Um, uh, yeah, so Mega Beedrill, I believe, is a 438 speed, and if you do the calcs on Sh Choice Scarf Chandelure, I think Chandelure, it's 284 speed times 1.5, it comes up at 426. Ooh, just so, by one point. Yeah, so uh, it's it sucks because it's a point shy of outrunning Mega Beedrill. And I I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um but <laughs> you have you have a you have a scissor. You have a scissor. And it'll do some work there. Um also if you're playing in an experienced player, they're not gonna know what to do. So that you have that going for you. Um but Mega Beedrill does give this team some issues. Uh so that's something that we might need to consider in the future. Maybe swapping, getting maybe maybe Crook needs to go for something else that can also act as a resist to to make a B drill or something like that. I, Crobat might fit in that slot pretty well in the Crook slot. So that then might be something. Lose our rocks, though. You do lose you do lose rocks, but I don't think they're incredibly necessary. But I think you could probably throw something in like Crobat or what what are some other options for? I mean, you could throw in Hippowdon. And then you don't lose yeah. your rocks. I mean, that could be a better option if you're if you're really into rocks. You I would you could switch out Crook for Hip out on just so that you can have something that's bulky that can take on your uh, the Mega B drill. And honestly, that would help out with the uh, Mega Manetric problem too. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, let's dump Crook for Hip out. <laughs> there we go. We've just fixed all of the problems with this team. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I would suggest if you guys want to get into UU. You go ahead and you just grab this team and kind of try to run with it. Um, it. It's a good team. It's solid. I think it's easy play style. I don't think it's too difficult to try to grasp the concept of the team. Though you could probably just dump in Hip Out on. So we'll make sure this is in the show notes down below if you want to do that. I don't know if you guys have any comments to follow up on that with. No. Nope. All right. So that's where we'll end this episode of Puckle's Battlecast. Of course, while you're at it, you can keep up with all of the fun stuff on Puckle. Here you are on the Puckle Plus channel. If you have, this is your first time listening to the show, well, thank you for finding the Puckle Plus channel. Go find the regular Puckle channel. That would be great for you guys to go listen to. Um, the Puckle feed where we talk everything about Pokemon, not just the video game, but pretty much the entire franchise. We would also like to see you guys do... Uh, Come to our Discord, hang out. We do a lot of battling there. We hold tournaments. We have a lot of fun. I would like that a lot. Uh, if you would like, go ahead and follow our social media at Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. All of those are on our website, PucklePodcast.com, and we are just Puckle Podcast at all of those links. You can also find links to all of those in the show notes. Finally, if you want to help the show financially, you could do so in a few ways. One, you can come to our Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast, where Jushiro and I stream Pokemon, whether it be the video game or even the trading card game. And you could come and watch us over there. And if you have a free Twitch Prime subscription, just subscribe to us. We'd appreciate it. That helps out the show, and it doesn't really hurt you guys. Also, if you want to just help the show financially, you could do so by going to our T Public store, where you can buy a bunch of awesome t-shirts and merch and some cool stuff even throw pillows buy thatch a throw pillow and finally you can also go to our patreon patreon.com slash puckle podcast and support the show financially you get a bunch of cool rewards including free pokemon for your game if you're looking for something specific so definitely take a look at that i believe that is my spiel though so that is it guys thanks for listening i am i am trainer thatch i'm shamu I'm our signal. And here in the Battle Royale Tower, it's closing time. <laughs>